Hello, my name is Sasha Bukov and when I was 14 years old I was a member of organization that supervised events for school children. There was an adult man, the head of the organization, who tried to molest me and he also insisted he had sexual relationships with other kids. In this video I will briefly tell you my story because I want you to know what kind of techniques child molesters can use on children so all of us could prevent something like that from happening. Because sometimes we miss or simply don't understand the signs of behavior that could lead to a sexual assault of a child. And before I start, I want to say that I was not molested or abused significantly. I was lucky, if that is even appropriate to say, but I was in fact a target of a child sex offender. But for months, neither me nor my parents, my friends or teachers had any idea what was happening. All that should have been prevented and the person who systematically did it should not be trusted as a child pedagogue, ever. And that is why I'm making this video. I have already briefly explained my story one and a half year ago during the Not Afraid to Say internet campaign on my Facebook with one exception. I did not mention the name of the offender. His name is Evgeny Zverev. This is his photo from VK. And without further ado, my story. I will read it from my laptop because it's hard for me to memorize and retell it. When I was in ninth grade, I used to go to many small trips and master classes for student activists. I don't remember how, but at some point I went to a weekend school located in a summer camp where kids who liked to organize events were gathered. The event was organized by organization called ALF. That is their website. Uh, they are located in a city called Perm in Russia. This is their page on Russian social network VK. I am currently banned from it, as you can see. Evgeny Zverev was always the head of the organization. Still is. After this weekend, in our district, a new coordination council was created to organize events for schools. As you can see on their website, I was in that council in year 2007-2008. We had weekly meetings, organized events, participated in theater classes, and so on. All the, acti uh, all the activities were coordinated by Evgeny. He was also encouraging us to work, with, to work for him in his children camp on summer holidays. It all looked very nice and innocent, except one thing. During smaller meetings, Evgeny liked to sit very close to students on a couch, could put his hand on someone's leg, and uh, he tried to touch us a lot. During private meetings he told me that he valued my input and promised that if I continue to work with him he would make me his number two or even his successor. He also wanted to become my mentor. I was not very eager to work in his camp during summer because I was usually working in another camp that I've loved for many years already. At some point he started telling sex stories involving him and his other adult female employee. He also started openly discuss masturbation and how he liked to do it. The most shocking story he told me was about another guy my age, who was one of the cool kind of guys in our community. Evgeny described how he tried to persuade this guy to do oral sex for quite some time, and that eventually that guy, that guy agreed and enjoyed it. I have never asked that guy to confirm or deny that story. For me, it was disgusting to even think about. Now I tend to believe it was just a strategy of a molester in a sense like, look, cool guy's fine with me doing that stuff, so you should try too. At some point, he also mentioned his previous potential protege who disappointed him and Evgeny was looking for a new one. He used to casually bring all those conversations up in private. During council meetings he only made perverted jokes but nothing more. I do not remember all the stories because it was 10 years ago and most likely my brain simply filtered them out already. But believe me, there were many others. Luckily or not, nobody in our group ever discussed his behavior and stories because we were children. One other guy also mentioned that Evgeny offered his friendship to him in private. The finale of that story was when one time he drove me home after a council meeting and we were sitting in his car, he gave another one of his masturbation advices and then he put his hand to my crutch. I said I did not like that, I was uncomfortable, he put his hand away. Afterwards I started studying in another school and never participated in any events with Alf or Evgeny Zverev in any way. 
For some time he was still asking me to work for him in his camp, but it was never an open question because, as I mentioned before, I had another favorite camp to work in. Eventually he stopped texting me at all and deleted all the photos with me. Back then I was not aware that everything happened before was unethical, illegal, immoral and, sh and I should have escalated it right away. Dear future and current parents, your kids might not tell you everything that happened in their life because sometimes they just cannot understand it. I was constantly brainwashed and eventually sexually harassed and I did not even know what actually has happened to me and what I should have done. For me, it was just an awkward bad memory that my brain carefully hid inside while in fact it was a crime and I was a victim. During summer 2015, eight years later, when I was already 22 years old, I found out shocking news. Zverev was supposed to be a head counselor in my favorite children camp where I had worked for many years. At first it looked quite funny to me because he always tried to belittle my favorite camp, saying that his one was much better and more professional. Needless to say, during the shift in our camp he failed miserably. You might think it's not important, uh, and I'm saying this only as a matter of revenge, but unfortunately no, it's, sti it's still part of the story. After he lost all the respect from the other camp employees, he wanted me to back him up to regain his reputation. And do you know how he wanted to regain my trust? By telling new disgusting stories from his sex life. For example, one of the employees was having a cold and he said the best cure is to shag under a warm blanket while farting until cold goes away. This might sound funny until you realize that was in a children's camp and he was one of the key executives there. It was the moment my brain let my memories back to the surface and I recalled everything. Back then I did not want to compromise our camp's reputation, so I told our director that I had enough disgusting information about Zverev to get him out of the camp immediately, but I was not willing to share it unless it was really needed. I've obviously heard many disgusting rumors about his actions in our camp once again, but I have nothing to report except what I've heard from him myself. year after that I wrote my story briefly as I mentioned in the beginning but a few weeks ago I came to a conclusion that writing about child sex offender without calling names is not enough now I realized I should have escalated this as soon as possible but I did not know what to do and I'm sorry my life as I think now has not been damaged significantly but the problem is I was not the only one who was his target and the victim the biggest problem here is not the fact that he tried to sexually abuse me and did not succeed, but the fact that he, I am sure, tried this on many other children. And I cannot be sure that all of them has not been abused and I am partially responsible for that. I've checked that he still has his own camp and last time it was organized on summer 2017. If he has been organizing camp activities all this time, that would mean he has been an authority figure for many kids for more than 10 years already. I cannot even imagine how many kids could have been exposed to his sexual abusing. I apologize to all those kids who could have been damaged or harassed because I did not know how to react or did not know what to do when I was targeted. I am sorry, I am very sorry, and now I am trying to do what I was supposed to do a long time ago. You see that man, I repeat, this is a child sex offender, and we must do everything in our power to protect our kids from having any kind of contacts with him or men like him. If we are talking about child sexual harassment, we have no ethical right to remain silent when we suspect any sign of it. By not doing anything, we are allowing offenders to keep doing what they are doing. We should not be threatened to get exposed or humiliated. It's the abusers who have to be, hu who have to be threatened to get exposed and humiliated, not the victims. There can be no exceptions. No matter what is your nationality, culture or religion, you have to be vocal about it. Child sex offenders should not have access to kids whose lives 
they will be capable of ruining. If you have a recent accident with Zverev or any other child sex offenders, go to the police or at least talk to your parents and relatives. I do not know Russian laws and procedures, but I do know one thing. If you can create a legal case against Zverev, you will have my full support. I will testify if needed and I will provide with everything I can to help the case. I allow anyone to use this video or all other materials that I put in public to be used in the case. To be clear, I am not sure if this man is technically speaking a pedophile, because I do not know whether he tried or wanted to molest a prepubescent child or not. But he is definitely a child sex offender, which Im legally implies more or less the same kind of crime as pedophilia. To answer your questions, I made this video in English, not in Russian, because first I make videos in English and second, um, my case unfortunately is very universal and I wanted to share my story with as many people as possible. Also using my native language was very hard for me to describe my story. English helped me being less emotional. The text version of this video you can find in the description both in English and Russian. Usually in the end I ask people to subscribe to my channel, but that kind of content is not what I usually produce, so it's completely up to you. Уважаемый Евгений, если вдруг ты увидишь это видео, а я уверен, найдутся порядочные люди, которые тебе его покажут, хочу сказать тебе следующее. Твое счастье, что мой отец не дожил до этого дня, и твое счастье, что я живу за пределами России. Но не переживай, как говорят у нас в городе, Пермь – это большая деревня. И где бы ты ни был, люди будут знать, что ты натворил и что ты за человек. А учитывая твою репутацию, ни у кого даже не возникнет сомнений в том, что ты домогался не только меня, но и других. За нами правда, а за тобой растление малолетних. И я уверен, что ты еще получишь по заслугам.